So this one's going to be kind of a hot take, and I don't really want to do one of these WAV videos. It's like about something I like, but this is an idea I had a few days ago, and I thought, you know what? This would actually make a fun video to do. And the main argument I want to make, and also, every once in a while a YouTuber gets to say something stupid and just roll with it. I mean, Chris Raygun does it. Shoe on Head does it. Uh, my friend, I'd say Osiophile does it, but no, he actually makes some sound arguments. But, um, yeah. I mean, even Razor Fist probably has those moments where he says something that kind of comes off boomerific. So, yeah, I thought I would just do this. And this is also an argument I've seen from, well, two of them. One of them is Raging Golden Eagle. And I kind of thought of this, and I thought, you know what? That's a fine damn point. Gatekeeping works. And my argument for this is simple. There are frauds in the world who like to come into our little hobby, infect it with their bullshit, ruin it, bastardize it, and make it into a product we don't even recognize as something we used to enjoy. And then it's just... And then they act like you should be kissing the ground they walk on. They're infiltrators. They're spies. They're commies. And not the, and not the kind Joseph McCarthy was hunting down either. Like, they're just like, they're a cancer. Don't let the cancer in. I mean, how many times do you have to touch the flame before you realize it burns? And the funny thing is, the people who say they hate gatekeeping, they're all fine and dandy with it when they're gatekeeping someone they don't like. This happened with Razor Fist a few months back, or maybe a year or two ago, when he started making a pulp, and he found a publisher for it who, who were fans of his, yeah, they threatened. They were threatened by some people who admitted it was all about gatekeeping, or that's a gate. That's what Razor Fist says. But I can believe it. I can believe it because the people who hate gatekeeping are some of the biggest hypocrites I've ever seen. Right up there with the diversity crowd or the liberals who say they hate the N word, but then they have no problem using it in certain circumstances. And yeah, it's just hypocrisy. And why I think gatekeeping works is simple. Well, no, not simple. It's actually pretty annoying that I even have to say this, but it keeps out the frauds, the shysters, the schlubs. And no, I'm not a Jewish person. And I don't know whether I want to be or not, because... Well, actually, if I was, they'd probably hate me because I'm obsessive about my money. The Jews would probably be like, Nate, you got a problem, man. You're making us look bad. You're obsessed with money. I'm not obsessed with money. For God's sakes, you literally pick up pennies off the ground and collect them and put them in a jar. I'd say you're a penny pincher, but I might be using that word wrong. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The point is, these frauds, they come in, they infect our hobbies, they ruin them. I mean, it's hap it happened with movies decades or probably a century ago, and now it's happening with video games. You have idiots like Date... Like, um, Cuckman, or Druckman. No, Cuckman seems more accurate, but yeah, Druckman, Neil Druckman. He is a famous example. He's a Ryan Johnson of the video game industry, of Naughty Dog. Like, he bastardized a studio I loved for years since I was a kid. If someone had gatekept, he would have never made it in. If there had been gatekeeping for Star Wars, Star Wars would have never been ruined. These SJWs would never have ruined our hobby. They would... Also, if people had been less bitchy to George Lucas, Disney would have never got their hands on either, but that's beside the point. Main point is... Well, yeah, gatekeeping's not such a bad thing. I mean... And the people who hate it are usually people who are frauds or hate being questioned. Like, let's say you're into me you've gotten into metal, and they ask, what's your favorite album? They get offended by that. Like, they just want to know what your favorite fucking album is. That is it. I don't even have a favorite album. Like, if I went to a Sabaton concert, they'd be asking, what's your favorite album? I wouldn't know what to tell them. I could name certain songs I like. Oh, well, actually, maybe The Great War was a good album. I liked that one, actually. It was fan-fucking-tastic. It had lots of good songs, especially The Red Baron. But again, I'm getting... I'm... I'm, uh... The word digressing. That's it. I'm digressing again. If someone had vetted these people and shown that they were dilettantes, 
frauds, shysters, and again, schlubs? Star Wars wouldn't be as divisive as it is now. Like now, it's you either love the EU or you love the new canon. And for the record, the canon is distilled dick cancer. The only thing good about it is what they did to the Fets. That was it. The rest of it is dick cancer. They bastardized Luke. They made Han a deadbeat dad. Leia, I don't. I still can't fathom what they did to her. It's just, yeah. I mean, they took one of the most idealistic and optimistic characters in fiction, Luke Skywalker, and made him into a pessimist and a nihilist who hates life, hates the Force, hates the Jedi, and just wants to die. They made him into a millennial, basically. Which makes no sense, because he was created in a generation when they were just getting out of, the, out of the pessimistic shit. Like, this was... Like, Star Wars was made in a time when movies were kind of depressing. It was like they sent you into a movie, and they practically handed you a 12-gauge shotgun to put in your mouth. Because they gave you depressing shit. Or so I hear. Then Star Wars came out. It was optimistic. It was upbeat. It was filled with hope. And now the inverse seems to be happening, where they're trying to go back to a time when movies made you want to put a shotgun in your mouth and Hemingway yourself. This is the route we're going down. And I say it is gatekeeping could have prevented this in some ways. If there, I mean, Hollywood gatekeeps. There's no, there's no one chastising them. If you're a conservative, you're allowed nowhere near movies. I mean, granted, conservatives and Republicans shouldn't be allowed be allowed in your creativity anyway, because most of them kind of suck at it. Like, they hate fun, I think. But then again, so does the left. Like, the left and the right, they have one thing in common. They hate fun. They hate the fact that you enjoy life, and they want you to do, just do whatever they say. They're tyrants, is my point. Tyrants of faction. And, like, no, none of the right or the left should be let, or let anywhere near creativity. Like, if you are a creative person and you were obsessed with politics, as far as I'm concerned, you should have been gatekept because I would want... Politics should be allowed nowhere near entertainment. Or, at the very least, if you can't separate your work from your politics, you cannot be trusted to make a good product. I mean, sometimes that works. Sometimes, when it works with the zeitgeist of the time, but now when you're beating someone over the head with a political message... Another example of gatekeeping would be well, comics. They just let in anyone they that they agree with. That's it. If they disagree with you politically, you're out the door. If they like, and they and they inject politics into the comics, they are ruining comics this way. Now they're trying to ruin manga as well. Mm, damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! It's really in, it's insufferable, really. And the point is. I know I say that a lot, but just roll with it. Gatekeeping keeps out these frauds who are coming in, and their only interest is injecting their own pathetic agenda into the entertainment we enjoy. They ruin it, they destroy it, they bastardize it, and we let them do it for years. I say it's about high time they were told to fuck off with this, that they aren't, they aren't welcome. I mean, they say all the time, if you don't like the stuff, it's not for you. So they, they even try to gatekeep who... The type of audience they want to want to um, court. So why can't we do the same? Stop giving them money. Start saying we don't want this anymore. If it's Ryan Johnson, we want nothing. If it's from Kathleen Kennedy, we want nothing. If it's from Disney, say fuck off. Actually, anything from Disney in general should be told to fuck off. They're making all this live action shit now, and. I think that's what the indie scene should do. Is like we should gatekeep who they we let into the indie scene. Like if if they have shown that they want nothing more than to make everything political and not fun or communistic, like what happened with uh, PayPal, then I say tell them. Then I say kick them out. Kick them out. Show them the door. Say hit the road, Jack, and never come back. No more. No more. No more. And if you get that reference, I applaud you. So if these people, they have no problem with gatekeeping us, why should we have any problem with gatekeeping them? Do unto others as they do unto you. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Well, they have shown how they want to be treated. They want to be treated, they treat us like shit, so we treat them like shit. They act all high and mighty. We, sh- we hold up a mirror and show just how stupid they look in our eyes. And... Yeah, no, I think I'm done with that tangent. The main tangent is, with gatekeeping, 
we could have saved certain franchises that we love. We could have saved Star Wars. We could have we could have saved Star Trek. Even though I'm not a Star Trek guy, I see the appeal for some people. I still think it's overrated schlock. Although I do like Deep Space Nine a little. That's an okay series. Especially Odo. He was an interesting concept. And we we can probably still save Lord of the Rings. Like I've said before, I've said again, I'll say it again. I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fan. I'm just now getting into it. Do in terms of the lore, I have no interest in the main series. The lore and the Silmarillion sounds interesting. It is not too late to save that. And Lord of the Rings fans, hear me out. If you do not start gatekeeping these schmucks, they will come in. They will ruin your characters. I don't know how because. As far as I know, I don't think they make new Lord of the Rings content, so it might be hard for them to ruin it. But they'll make adaptations of stuff and just run with it with their own creative freedom, and they will bastardize it. That's what they're doing now with Amazon. The only difference is Amazon is just looking to pick up the hype left over or the to tap the vein left over from when Lord, Game of Thrones was still running around. After that idiot George R. R. Martin series kind of crashed and burned... They wanted to tap that vein. Unfortunately, they decided to do it with Lord of the Rings. And God help you, Lord of the Rings fans, when that comes out. Like, I imagine when it comes out, it'll be like that scene from Team Four Stars, Dragon Ball Z abridged. You ruined it. You ruined it, and I'm leaving. That's how I imagine your reaction might be. I th- my thing would be, don't go away. Fight these pricks. Show you're not going to take their shit lying down. Don't give money. Just say, I don't like this. I don't like this. This is bad. This is schlock. And you schlubs, I'm sorry, I can't sue you. I'm sorry, you're going to sue us for a product we made? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I'm sorry that conversation can't come up. Right up there with... um, Right up there with Sauron wanting to copyright strike Celebrimbor after he sent the Elven Rings away. Like, I would love to see that conversation, because that's basically an interpretation of that, of why he was mad, was um, he made the rings, Celebrimbor sent them away, and, and then Sauron was like, you wouldn't have had the idea without me. So, yeah, I'm sorry, that, I don't know why I thought of that. Probably because I just saw that video recently, and I thought that would be a funny scene to see play out. But, um, you know, gatekeeping isn't a bad thing. As long as you're not discriminating against someone... I mean, if you're discriminating against someone because you think they're a fraud, I'm fine with that. Now, if you're saying we can't let this person in because of X, Y, and Z, like, of their race or gender, that's wrong, yes, but... At the same time, that's they'll, they'll probably be trying to use that against white people here soon, so... Given the white hate sentiment going around. And the Asians are probably next on our list. I'll be like, Asians, buckle up. Like, if you think it's bad now, just wait. It gets worse. Us white people, we've been taking hate for a couple decades now. Well, not a couple decades, a few year or two now, since Trump took office. Maybe longer. Yeah, buckle up. It gets worse. It gets so much worse. But, um... And also, women... I mean, I, I hate to sound sexist, but at the same time... Why is it whenever a woman is in charge, things go downhill? Except for Amy Hennig. When she's in charge, things go uphill. When, uh, But you put a Kathleen Kennedy in charge, it goes down faster than shit through a goose. And, yeah, no, no, I, I, don't, res- I, don't, I don't regret saying that. I think that it deserves to be said. People always shit on men. I've, I see no problem with doing it in the reverse. Well, not in the reverse. It's more like I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying random shit because I feel like it. And, like, as long as you're not discriminating against someone because of their race or gender or religion, then, yeah, gatekeeping is just fine. You're not discriminating against someone or keeping them out because of their race, their gender, or their religion. You're keeping them out because they're shysters, they're frauds, they're liars. They want to come in and change what made something great, and change it into something that's awful. We saw this with Star Wars, and even when these even when these freaks get their way, whenever these nut jobs get their way, they still bitch and moan. Like, um, like even if when they're trying to be consistent with the character of a character, they get mad, like when Boba Fett killed a woman. It's like, 
he's a bounty hunter. Like they threw a fit about this, and I'm like, he's a bounty hunter. What do you want him to do? Step break out into a poetry slam? Actually, you know, on these nut jobs, probably they do. They probably would prefer that, but oh well, that's not happening. Get used to it. Us us real fans have had to get used to the fact that everything we love dies. Which at this point in my life seems appropriate. And at this point in history, also seems appropriate. I mean, politics is shitty. Entertainment is backwater. Like the Everglades. Social discourse is, uh, shitty. Like, what more do you expect, really? Gatekeeping seems to be the only way to preserve what little enjoyment there is in life now. Like, whatever you enjoy, gatekeep the shit out of it. Because these weirdos, they're like Californians. They ruined their state. Now they're moving and migrating to other places to ruin those states. So I think it's high time you played the go back to California game. If you're gatekeeping, say you're not a real fan, go away. Like if if you can't, like unless they can prove somehow that they are actually real fans, they need to be told to go away. Because they are frauds and nothing more. They are charlatans, liars. They're kind of like the Jack Thompsons of the world. Well, actually, no, Jack Thompson, he didn't lie per se. He misrepresented some stuff, is all I can always say about him. Now, they're more like the Anita Sarkeesians of the world. They're con artists. And you want to keep out the con artists. So, yeah, gatekeep the con artists is all I really want to end this on. So, have a nice day. Sorry about this rambling rant, but, yeah, have a nice day. Good day to you. Remember, the game was rigged from the start.